today on Exploring Scotland's History, we're heading to Skipness Castle. The gates to the property are stunning. Not as stunning as the cast iron pillars, and they are really cast iron. Wow. First room I find, of course, is the latrine tower. This big box for your loo. Don't worry, these slots are not for separate floors. It wasn't that they were very small, it was converted into a ticket afterwards. But the latrine tower is circa 1300. Like I said in previous videos, if we replace something, it has to look new. That's clearly been there from 1995. Don't really see how vast this courtyard is from up here, and how small Martin is down there. Something you can't deny, this castle has stunning views over Ireland. That's the escape for the latrine. I'm not going there, not because it's the escape for the latrine, but because there's a bird's nest in it somewhere. You can tell by the thickness of these gateways has to be a McSween invention after Castle Sween. You'd be right. These thick McSween gates would have originally been wooden and barred, but as you can see, there is a murder hole to stop any intruders getting too far. So, like I said, when I saw the door, the first castle was erected here in the 1250s by the McSweens. It was held by Macdonald Lord of the Isles until 1493 when it was forfeited. The castle was granted to the foresters but in 1499 <laughs> Chickapark Isle got it. He gave it to the Campbells of Skipness to look after. Walter Campbell of Skipness was the second wife of Janet Douglas, Lady Glans. He was imprisoned in Edinburgh Castle on jumped up charges of treason and poisoning. Um, he was imprisoned there with his wife and his son. James V in 1537 condemned the family to death. At that stage Walter attempted to escape but fell to his death. Lady Glams was burnt as a witch and the only survivor was their son. Their son was imprisoned until the death of James V and then he inherited the Glams properties. The castle was abandoned at the end of the 16th century though it is recorded that Campbell of Skipness in 1715 signed his allegiance to George the first here. Did you know 
that Skipness Castle was involved in the Battle of Loop Hill, Ooh. which took place in Clacken, about well, basically where we're staying. Uh, the hill where we took the dogs up for a walk, that's Loop Hill. Loop Hill was one of the battles in the first Jake Bentley Rebellion uh, uprising. The uh, Kintyre at the time was really important for a supply route. Uh, because the McDonald's and the lot of the people in Kintyre, the McAllister's in particular, were being supplied from uh, Ulster. Uh, and their supply routes for the Jacobite Rebellion came through Kintyre from Ireland. So Kintyre was quite important. The British realised this was an issue and decided we'd better send some troops and take Kintyre. So they hastily put together a garrison uh, of 500 men. Uh, the 500 men uh, were barely trained and were sent over to Kintyre and they were stationed at Tarbot. Uh, there was, the captain was William Young. Uh, the McAllisters and the McDonalds had 200 trips of their own and they were quite experienced. Now, they, they were originally stationed here at Skipness Castle. On hearing that the British were sending the troops down, they marched north uh, and they met up at Loop Hill, just, out, just outside Clacken. Now the battle wasn't really much to speak of. Uh, only two of the Kintyre soldiers were killed and none of the British soldiers. But the battle happened quite late in the day and what happened was after the Kintyre, the McAllisters and the McDonalds retreated, they realised they were totally outnumbered and they didn't want to risk losing men. Of course, then the British troops, having come across the 200 Scottish troops, realised that the Scottish troops were vastly more experienced and didn't want to send their 500 English troops or British troops in to fight the more experienced Scottish troops. So that was it. They just all walked away. It was considered a, beat, a defeat for the, the entire McAllisters because that, just after that, the British took Kintyre and that leads on to how the Campbells got this in the early 16th century. Yeah. I'm looking at Julie because I think she's going to nod. I hope yeah. she's going to nod. Is that right? Uh -huh. I'm right. Excellent. For a change. So that was the Battle of Loop Hill. We are leaving Skipness Castle and heading towards the chapel that is just down the peninsula from the actual castle. Right, I've just come in the gates of the chapel and all the headstones are generally pointing one direction and here we have one that isn't. And it's quite an impressive one too. Wow. That's pretty neat. So this is Kilbrannan Chapel and Gravesite. Like so many places in Kintyre, there is the Irish connection. St Brendan, the navigator, came here from County Kerry in the 13th, 14th century. This would have been dedicated to him. This replaced an earlier chapel dedicated to St Columba, which as we see is part of the castle now. It has been built into the extension per se. It's suspected it was the clan Stuart of Butte that introduced this chapel. It was still in use in 1692 and was abandoned in the 18th century. But I'm just looking here, there are a lot of new headstones. Uh, we're talking two, three years old, so it is clearly still being used. Look at that view of Iron. This must be one of the most stunning grave sites I've come to. It's just beautiful. There are medieval and pre-reformation slabs here that we're going to have a wee look around the graveyard. Um, there's quite a lot of this plowman <laughs> that's supposed to be unusual but it's just clearly unusual in some parts of Scotland. Um, 
but apparently there's some really, really nice, nice labs here. Yeah, not sure how well we can actually see this, but we do have the angel. And right at the bottom there are clearly four horses with a plough behind and the ploughman on the end. That's really quite an amazing headstone. We're inside the Campbell enclosure now. We have Robert Campbell of Skipness who died in Glasgow and is interred in Bothwell Church. It's quite impressive on the top. And I have another captain of Skipness here. Colin Campbell. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. This is really quite an intricate slab. Right, this one's going to be far too heavy. Martin will lift it up. Oh my. Have the scissors. Possibly a weaver. Warrior. Have the animals turning into the scrolls that mean life. Oh my goodness, that is just amazing. How amazing is that? That's perfect. I'm just going to have to do a reverse pan, even though I'm against them, because I think it's worth a reverse pan. I'll zoom in again. It's in really good condition. Imagine what you can find in the middle of nowhere. Wow. We are now inside the beautiful little chapel. And we're going to see what's in this one. They are very good at protecting them but they're really heavy. Wish me luck. Oh that's another quite oh yes thank you Martin. That looks like the Trinity up the top or possibly a crucifixion. Hard to tell. My that is stunning. And the hump scene, which we often see in these slabs. Wow. Ellen Cahoon Campbell on the back of the chapel wall. That looks like that really nice marble from Mull. There are some slabs within the chapel walls. Unfortunately, there's nothing left to recognise them or find an owner. That's has been quite grand in its day and built very much like Castle Swing in the image of. I'm really quite impressed by this one with the scissors and the very anatom I can't say it now. A very anatom no, I can't say it now. Anatomically. It's anatomically correct, so it is actually. Mm -hmm. I think this is my favourite headstone in the graveyard. We have a daffodil, a spade and a hoe, and Mr. Taylor from Skipness. So clearly not as old as some of the slabs. This is really quite something else. It's nearly dark because I've been hanging about trying to get a sunset as usual but it's maybe the best time to come back into the castle and tell you about the Green Lady. The Green Lady haunts the castle. It's a child dressed in green with golden hair. The spirit would clean and tidy up the castle, would feed the hens but apparently she nearly killed a man when she thought he'd got into the wrong bed. Local tales say that she also thwarted an attack on the castle 
by causing total confusion to the men who had come to besiege it. It could well have been after Macaulay MacDonald, as he unsuccessfully besieged the castle in the 1640s. Did you know? <laughs> um, Alistair Macaulay MacDonald was famous for using the Claymore and it is said he has been given credit with starting the first Highland Charge and inventing the Highland Charge which obviously has worked very very well. Basically all the guys, quick men, charge into the enemy, let off a charge and then start hand to hand combat and that was always quite successful for the Highlanders until Culloden. Right, it's getting dark, so I'm a wish to get this castle adieu. If you would like to see more stunning Scottish scenery and random historical facts, please like and subscribe. Drop me a comment. Feel free to join me on Instagram and Facebook, both exploring Scotland's history. Thank you for watching.